entrepreneur, community advocate, and global humanitarian. Listen to Pastor Michael Clinton as he shares another inspirational and encouraging message to infuse your life. Can you thank the Lord for my wife? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're so blessed here in this ministry because of people like you and people like our team and people here that love the Lord. And um, I feel God's presence in this place. Can you sense the presence of the Lord? Can you just sense his presence? I believe if you tune in for the next 15, 20 minutes, I believe God is going to speak a word to you that will take your life, your marriage, your ministry, your family your future, your destiny to the next level. If I can get about 20 minutes of your undivided attention, we're going to go into something that in the realm of the spirit, nothing will be able to stop you. Amen? And so I believe that God wants to do something so miraculous in your life that it will blow your mind. And I do believe because you are here today, because you are here today, God is going to honor your faithfulness to him. You could have been any other place in the world, Gary. Young ladies, you guys could have been doing anything else, but you chose to say, I've come to give my first fruit, my time, my body, my heart to the Lord today. And God honors diligence. He honors consistency. He honors your passion for him. And as my wife said, don't get weary in well-doing to the Thomases. Don't get weary. I'm telling you, God is going to do some stuff in your business and your nonprofit and your family that's going to blow our minds because he can trust us. And you know one way that you know that he trusts us? When, when he sees you diligent pursuing him. When he sees you diligently pursuing him. The proof of your desires is in your pursuit. You can't say I desire something and not pursuing it. The proof of what you say that you desire is in your pursuit. And so because you are here today pursuing God, you're saying to God, I desire you. And it's not just lip service, but the proof, God, that I love you is that I'm in the house of the Lord worshiping you with other believers. Amen. So today we're talking about the power of prayer. The power of prayer. So we're going to talk about a few things and the purpose of prayer. There's nothing that gets done in the earth lest we pray it in. Some of the things that's been held up in your life, some of the things that haven't come to pass, it's because we haven't prayed it into existence. So we have to pray God's purposes and plans. The Bible says many are the plans in a man's heart. But it's God's purpose that will prevail. God's word calls us to pray. One key reason to pray is because God commands us to pray. It is a commandment. If we are to be obedient to his will, then prayer must be a part of our life. Prayer must be a part of our life. The Bible talks about it. In Romans 12, 12, it says, be joyful in hope, patience in affliction, faithful in prayer. Again, that's Romans 12, 12, and she'll put it up on the screen there. Amen. It says, be joyful in hope, patient in afflictions, faithful in prayer. He wants you to be faithful in prayer. Philippians 4 and 6 says this. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. The Bible says by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Whatever it is that you're you're, you're needing, request it unto God in prayer. And then Colossians 4 and 2 says this, Gary, it says devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Do you notice the tandem with prayer? As we read in in the previous scripture, it always combines with thanksgiving. Prayer and thanksgiving go together. Remember what it said in Philippians 4, 6, it says, be not anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Do you see that? It says, with thanksgiving, present your request unto God. 
So that means that when you go to God, you've got to go with a thankful heart. You've got to believe that it's going to be done. You've got to believe that it's already done. If I have a thankful spirit, I'm thankful that it's already done. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't have a thankful spirit believing that it's not going to happen. So prayer and thanksgiving go together. So when you're praying this week, do it joyfully with thanksgiving that you know that it's going to already be done. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says pray continually. We're talking about the importance of prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says pray continually. Because this is your power source. This is your source. You are connected to God. If you disconnect from prayer, you disconnect from your source. You have no power. 1 Timothy 2 and 1 says this. I urge then, first of all, that request, prayers, intercessions, here it is again, and thanksgiving be made for who? Everyone. God wants everybody to pray. This is, and everybody have the ability to pray. Everybody has the ability to pray. Prayer is an act of obedience. God calls us to pray and we must respond. It is a commandment, Kenzie, that we pray. He calls us to pray and he wants us to respond. Everybody has the ability to pray. I remember over the years, I, I remember growing up in the church and um, all the deacons would pray and um, all these powerful men of God would pray and I mean, they had such this eloquent tone and posture in their prayer and had all of these wonderful words that would precede their prayer. And dear most heavenly father who sits high on the throne, who, I mean, it's just, I mean, they just, and they, they really prepped their prayer before the Lord. And I used to, I remember like, man, I used to want to do that as a young child. And, but the older I got, the more I realized that really didn't matter. <laughs> The more I build a relationship with him, God wants us to come to him as a child when we pray. And when you come to him as a child, you don't have all these eloquent words. You just come as a like, God help me. Father, I love you. Thank you. I mean, you come to him humble. It's not all of these sophisticated words. And so God, when you pray, that's why everybody is qualified to pray. Just talk to God like he's your father. Sometimes I just ride in the car like, God, I need your help right now, and uh, God, I need wisdom concerning this, and God, I need favor, and God, you know me. And I don't come with all these eloquent words, I just have a conversation with them, and, and I reverence him in my conversation. So everybody, start at the level of where you are with your relationship with God. You don't, don't try to pray like Minister Alicia or like Joe or some of these incredible prayer warriors. Start with just a conversation with them. Number two, Jesus is our example of praying. Jesus prayed regularly. Why did Jesus pray? One reason he prayed was an example so that we could learn from him. The gospels are full of references of prayers of Christ. Matthew 14, 23 says this. Matthew 14, 23, it says, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. If Jesus prayed, then we must pray. He had a purpose to fulfill on the earth and that he knew that he could not fulfill his purpose unless he prayed. So if Jesus had to do it, we won't be able to fulfill our purpose on the earth unless we pray. He's our example. And then Matthew 26, 36 says this. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and do what? And pray. Jesus had to pray. Because he recognized he was powerless, lest the Lord go before him. We are powerless unless we pray. Number two, prayer is how we communicate to God. Prayer is not just about asking for God's blessing. Without communication, relationships fall apart. Our relationships with God suffers when we do not communicate with him. So we must pray to communicate with God. I mean, how many want a closer relationship with God? Can I suggest to you that prayer is a great way to build that relationship? Number four, prayer allows us to participate in God's work. Prayer allows us to participate in God's work. 
Prayer is the means God has ordained for something to happen. Prayer, for instance, helps others know the love of Jesus. And I love this one. Prayer can clear human obstacles out of the way in order to do God's work. God will remove human obstacles out of your way that you can have the advantage. There is no personal place or thing that can stop you. How many ever had how many ever had something on your credit removed and you didn't know how it got removed? <laughs> I'm telling you, God can remove human obstacles out of the way. He can remove technical obstacles out of the way. He can cause the computer system to crash. He can, I'm telling you, but it all starts with prayer. Number five, prayer gives us power over evil. How many know that there are many other plans and plots against you? There are plots and plans and things that the evil one wants to take you out. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. The evil one hates you, but prayer can stop the hand of the evil one. For our struggles, and this is Ephesians 6 and 12, Ephesians 6 and 12, for our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Prayer gives us power over the evil. We have the ability to pray evil forces off of us and away from us. We can do that in prayer. Amen. So you don't have to fear the boogeyman or the devil or that type of thing. You don't have to fear people or places and things. That's why you can't be afraid of evil places, evil things, evil atmospheres. You have the authority. You have the authority. The Bible says you have the authority to, to, to walk upon serpents and scorpions and of, of all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. You don't have to be afraid of anything. So we have power in prayer over evil. I've got four more points I want to make. Prayer keeps us humble before God. Prayer keeps us humble before God. Why? We look to God and not ourselves. When we pray, we look to God, Kenzie, and not ourselves. So it keeps me humble and at his feet because I know within Mike by himself, I have no power. But when I am connected to God in prayer, I have the same power that God has. The same power that he has. He has given it to me with prayer. And so it keeps me humble to know that it has nothing to do with me. Tiffany, it's all about God. Amen. Number eight, and I got three more. Prayer grants us the privilege to experience him. We can experience God through prayer. I believe that we experience God today in our praise and worship because of prayer. We've been praying for moves of God. We've been praying for God to fill our services and to, to, to come into this house. And, and we've been praying for what we experience today in worship. Prayer allows us to experience God. The next one, answered prayer is a potential witness to God. A answered prayer is a potential witness to God. If you share with one of your friends that God answered your prayer, it brings glory to God. It's a witness to God. We're talking about the power of prayer. Number 10, prayer strengthens the bond between believers. When we pray together, our spirits become connected. There's a bond between you and I when we pray together. When we pray, when I sit and I pray my wife, we pray before we came here, we prayed last night, we prayed before we went to bed. There was a bond between my wife and I in this realm of the spirit through prayer. If you really want to get to know somebody, you really want to have a close friendship with them, spend some time praying with them. I'm just, I was, I'm just reminded of a situation when, when I first became the music pastor at St. Peter's back in 1996. I never forget the first Sunday that I ministered with Bishop Hash, my bishop and my pastor. You know, I, I had come from more of a traditional church. And I kind of had my way. I can play and we can go to church and the preacher was hooping and I knew how to do that and all that kind of stuff. But when I got to St. Peter's, Bishop was a spirit-filled man. He can care less about what you can do and what you can play on the keyboard. He want to know, can you flow with me in the spirit? And so 
I had all of this knowledge as a young man about how to flow to have church, but I didn't have a lot of knowledge of how to flow in the spirit. And so I'll never forget the first Sunday that I, was, I had got hired and I was the new minister of music at St. Peter's. I felt like, okay, I'm just gonna do what I know. I know how to do this. I never forget Bishop Hash walked and he said, no, don't, he said, stop. He stopped me in the middle and said, no, just, just, just stop. Because I hadn't been equipped on how to flow in the spirit. And I thought, okay, man, that was embarrassing, you know? <laughs> and so, so I just stopped and I just humbled myself. And after the service, and I just, he, he came up to me and said, uh, son, you did good, but what I want you to do is to make sure that you are at every prayer session and you are praying with me regularly. He said, because you got to get to know my spirit. He said, I want you to pray. He said, every time I pray, he said, pray with me. And he even said, I want you to come up here and stand beside me. And he used to, in prayer, he used to, he used to grab my hand and he would walk with me and pray. For that, I remember that the first, maybe the first six months or so, he would have my hand and he would walk with me. And why was he doing that? Because he knew that there would be a bond between us and the spirit if we prayed together. And the more I began to pray with him, the more I began to flow in the spirit with him. Am I making, do you understand? So praying in the spirit or praying with someone creates a bond with you and them. So if you're married, pray with your spouse. There, there would be a bond. If you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or a significant other, it's so you can pray with them. And I promise you, if you begin to pray with them, sometimes the spirit will expose stuff that was never, uh, that you couldn't see otherwise. You really want to get to know if that person's for you? Spend some time praying. And things will come out that you didn't even know of. You want to know if that person is the right person for you to have a relationship with? When you pray with somebody, you'll get to know their spirit. Amen? And then my last one. Prayer can succeed where other means have failed. <laughs> Prayer can succeed where other means have failed. Prayer will not fail you. Amen. Thank you for listening to our podcast. It is our desire that your life be infused with the Spirit of God through Christ Jesus. Infusion Worship is located in the beautiful city of downtown Winston-Salem, North Carolina. To learn more about Infusion Worship Ministry, visit our website at infusionworship.com.